Chapter 6. Ways to adapt this into your life. When you look at what you can and can't eat, you may wonder if this is even possible. The answer is yes, there are ways to adopt this diet into your life. Here, we'll go over the best tips to really get the most out of the Dr. Sebi Green Smoothie Cleanse and why you'll be able to use this once you make the decision to start doing this. Drink enough water. One thing you'll notice is how hungry you're going to be on this cleanse. That's because you're getting rid of those carb-rich foods that only provide a temporary burst of energy and replacing them with fruits and veggies that will keep you fuller for longer. But when you start, you may feel hungrier than before. A lot of people don't realize this until way after the fact. However, a good way to make sure you don't fall off the diet is to drink enough water. Part of the reason why we grab those carb and sugar-rich foods is because our bodies are asking for something else. Water. Most of us are much more dehydrated than we think. It's only when we sit down, drink water, and realize that we're lacking do we start taking this seriously. Water does stave off hunger, helps with the motion of various foods and cellular processes, and our bodies need it. We're made up of 70% water. We're basically sentient vegetables. So giving ourselves enough water will help us not only stay focused on the main goal, but also will prevent dehydration and a slew of other problems that come along with this. If nothing else, every time you feel a little bit hungry, drink some water. If it sticks around, you're hungry. If not, just dehydrated. So keep drinking water. Prepare healthy meal plans. Part of the secret to a good green smoothie cleanse is making sure that you prepare ahead of time. Why? It makes when you start your week off much easier. It's simpler to just put it all together the week before or even the night before than scrambling to make smoothies for every meal you have. It also prevents you from falling off the diet. One problem people have with diets is the urge to go off them the second they realize they don't have any food ready. After all, it's easier just to go get some fast food than to prepare a smoothie, right? Sure, it doesn't offer the health benefits this green smoothie does. That's why it's important to make sure that you have a meal plan in place with the smoothies you want for this diet. We'll provide you with some wonderful smoothies at the end of this book that you can try. Make sure you prepare them the drink before though, or make a week's worth and then drink it. Some of our smoothies can be stored up to two weeks too. So if you want to plan ahead, there are a lot of great options. It prevents you from falling off the diet, and if you think about it, it's much easier to just grab and go with a smoothie rather than trying to scramble around to get a smoothie ready beforehand, right? I sure believe so, so make sure you prepare beforehand. You won't regret it if you do. Think your trips out. In the same vein, you need to prepare your trips out. This is a problem many who start on diets face. They want to lose weight and begin the cleanse, but they don't factor in going out or any trips that they have. If you don't do this, you're more likely to fall off your diet. This also includes work too. If you eat at the office, you should prepare a smoothie to drink at lunch and maybe a snack smoothie or an early morning power smoothie. Preparing for this early on keeps you prepared for the day. This is also good to do if you do stay late at the office or might be gone for a long time due to a work event. You should plan for the smoothies of course, but also make sure you've got ample water as well to keep you hydrated and stave off hunger. If you don't plan these early on, you're much more likely to give in to temptation. One way I like to do this is by grabbing a smoothie, putting in a to-go container and bringing it with me. I like to put it in the work fridge and then get it when I want it. I do this with multiple thermoses and I do bring extra in the event that I do get hungry. Preparation is the key to success with this diet. So if you prepare early on, you'll have a much better chance at doing well with this diet now and down the line. Keep the microwave away. 
When you're using this diet, you want to avoid microwaves. Microwaving your food isn't good for it. According to Dr. Sebi, he believes it'll kill your food. While it may not literally kill it, microwaves aren't good for your food. They take out some of the nutrients, such as in the case when you cook certain vegetables. Your microwave shouldn't be used when you're on the Dr. Sebi Green Smoothie Cleanse. Even though it might be tempting, try to eat all your foods raw or processed in a blender. Avoid cooking your food as much as you can. You can potentially toss your microwave if you decide to do this for the long term. It's a bit of a change, especially if you are relying on this for so long, but the benefits of such can certainly outweigh the drawbacks and should be considered if you're looking to use this in the long term. Try to cook your food naturally if you do choose to cook your foods. However, you'll notice as you start to use this more and more, you begin to prefer eating foods raw. This retains all of the nutrients and can give you better health benefits than cooking your food ever will. Don't cheat. This goes without saying, but don't cheat on this diet. I know how tempting it is to cheat, especially if you are struggling at first. With the way our world is, it makes it very easy to cheat. There is fast food around every corner, and most of the time canned and processed foods are right there. You might think, oh, it's just one little cookie, or oh, it's one piece of meat. But the thing is, that's a slippery slope that you'll fall down into if you're not careful. Part of the reason people fail at diets is because they cheat. Even though they claim they're doing everything right, they end up showing the truth that they've been cheating here and there. In order for this diet to work, you need to follow it. That means foregoing meat and using the green smoothies along with the approved foods during the cleanse. When the cleanse is over, there are different ways for you to incorporate the foods back into your life. But until then, you need to understand that to make this diet work. You have to follow it. Cheating on diets is something many do. After all, it's so easy to fall into the trap of cheating. But you want those health benefits, right? You want to build a healthy lifestyle of eating, correct? The best way for you to do this is to not fall into the trap of cheating and instead eat healthy foods that ultimately benefit you and will help you get the most that you can out of this diet as well. Don't cheat, but instead persevere. Every time you feel that urge to cheat, try to drink some water. If there are places that tempt you into cheating, try to avoid them during cleanses. For example, if you want to eat a whole plate of cookies, try to avoid the snacks aisle at the store and just get your fruits and veggies and then leave. Remember, cheating doesn't get you anywhere. It's hard work and perseverance which does though. Stay calm. It's hard to stay calm when using this diet. You realize that you're hungry more often, which can make you anxious simply because this is a newfound feeling. But you don't have to worry about this. Instead, the key here is to stay calm as you use the diet. It's easy to freak out, work yourself up into a panic, and then stress eat a bunch of foods. But the best way to go about handling this is to stay calm. When those hanger pangs come, understand them, drink some water and go from there. When you feel anxious about the changes, take some deep breaths and focus on the goal. Keeping yourself grounded and focused will help you reach your goals. If you have people that tempt you too much and make you anxious, then you should try to avoid them during your diet. This doesn't have to be forever, of course, but as you get better at handling yourself on cleanses like these, you'll notice it's easier to resist temptation and better for you as well. The best way to handle temptation and this diet is to stay calm. That's because if you overthink this and worry too much, it makes it much harder. Keep calm and continue with the diet. Have support. When doing something like this, it's good to have support. Whether it's friends, family, or a support group, the right support makes the journey easier. This type of diet is not easy to do alone. Sometimes when you have enough motivation, you're able to keep it up much easier. A support group is also a valid idea. 
These people can help you push through and better understand what's going on and provide inspiration when it feels like there is none. The right support will change things by having enough support. You'll be stronger, happier, and better too. Look online for different support groups if you have no clue where to start. Prepare ahead. Finally, before you start this diet, you need to prepare ahead. We did talk about this with the trips and like, but also look at preparing for the diet ahead of time. This includes doing a huge clean out, getting rid of foods that aren't approved, and only keeping those that are. This may take a little bit of time and work, but this is actually really good for you to do. Why is that? Because if you eliminate the temptation early on, you'll be better ready to handle this cleanse. This cleanse is a drastic change to what you're used to, and it can be scary to start with. But by adequately and aptly preparing, you'll be able to arm yourself with everything you need for this. To get in, I suggest cleaning out your pantry of any foods that aren't part of this diet. This includes meats, processed foods, baked goods, even dairy. Then I suggest you go to the grocery store and get the approved foods before you start. When you do begin, though, some people have a hard time adjusting. Slowly weaning yourself off these foods is good too. You shouldn't be eating these for every meal, but start to slowly replace the foods, not encourage with those too. By the end of this, you'll be able to cleanse your body and give yourself healthy fruits and veggies that you will enjoy, no matter what. Chapter 7 How to Sustain After the Cleanse Is this diet sustainable for the long term? In reality, not really. This diet is made to naturally cleanse the body and of course get you into proper eating habits. So what do you do when it's over? You need to be careful because if you jump back into eating right away, you could feel sick and you could dredge up old habits. While you don't need to forego meat, it's best if you still limit meat consumption, avoid processed and canned foods, and also only eat the foods that are on the avoid side of the list sparingly. You don't need to live on smoothies your whole life, but getting back into normal eating after you've been doing the cleanse for 10, 20, heck, even 30 days does take a little bit of getting used to. Dr. Sebi does say this diet can be used for the rest of your life, but most people want to use this to encourage healthy habits and forego unhealthy food, so we'll go into how you can still use this diet after it's all over. Eat slow, chew well. When you're about to eat solid foods again, the most important thing for you to do is understand that you're going to need to eat slower than before. That's because your digestive tract is used to the smoothies that you've been eating. If you've only been doing smoothies, eating too fast can cause you to vomit it back up or make you sick. Eating slowly allows for the digestive system to naturally move it along without irritating your stomach or esophagus as well. Another part of this is chewing well too. Remember, up to this point, you've been eating blended foods, so your body is not used to larger pieces of food. You must use your teeth to properly break this down before swallowing, or it can make you sick down the line. Eating slowly also helps prevent you from feeling sick too, since eating slowly typically causes fullness faster and allows for satiation and not overeating. It isn't a race, and you shouldn't be trying to finish food too fast, since it can irritate your stomach and other parts of the body too. Wean off the diet gradually. Just like with getting onto the diet, you don't leave it right away. If you cut the diet cold turkey, your body will be shocked, and it can cause trouble with swallowing, keeping food down, and it could make you sick. Plus, if you've been doing this diet for a period of time, you don't want to shock the body into suddenly not doing it. The best way to prevent this is from affecting you is to slowly wean off the diet and make sure that you're not pushing yourself back into it right away. You can do this by slowly substituting one meal for another. For example, you do the smoothies for breakfast and lunch, but then for dinner is a small meal. This does take some getting used to, but eventually you'll get it down to one meal 
into a green smoothie and you'll be able to keep food down easily and effectively too. Do not overeat. A big part of this is overeating. You might make this mistake when you start to incorporate food into your life once again. You might think it isn't a ton of food only to realize that you've overeaten. You feel sick and you might end up throwing up. Overeating is a common problem people on this diet deal with, especially if they're introducing foods into their diets again. Typically, this occurs because they eat a little bit, think that's nothing, then continue to eat more past the point of fullness. And then it becomes overeating. This does make you sick. So it's important that after your cleanse, you don't just binge foods right away. Instead, take it slow. Remember, it's not a race, so make sure that you feel full. You simply stop. If you want to keep eating, you should do so. This may seem obvious, but this is something most people forget about. And if you don't want to deal with stomach pains and aches, then make sure you don't overeat. And instead, eat a little at a time and then come back to it. You might start by making very tiny meals, since that is the amount you can tolerate at the moment. But as you start to eat more and more, you find that you can handle more food and then you can slowly increase it from there. Remember this isn't a race, so if you want to eat slowly, do so. Remember to properly chew, and when you're full, you can pack it up and eat it again later when you feel hungry. Small meals usually do the trick at this point, so also incorporate that as well. Continue healthy habits. Another thing to watch out for is slipping back into unhealthy habits. Some people do this after the cleanse. They're able to keep it up for a little bit, but then the moment they're off the diet, they're back into eating processed foods, meats, and whatnot. That's the problem. The goal of this is to encourage healthy habits. I'm not saying you have to continue to only have smoothies for the rest of your life. But remember that when you're done with the cleanse, you want to continue to eat healthy. This includes having servings of fruits and veggies, seeds and nuts, and trying to avoid too much meat as well. If you do have fish, try to go for healthy fish that's good and filling for you. Remember, this diet doesn't mean you don't pick up on the healthy habits, but instead you need to also incorporate the healthy habits that you learned in the future too. You can't just live on cleanses alone, but this will be a diet that teaches you the value of fruits and veggies and how leafy greens are good for you. Journal your changes. If you're just not sure how much you've changed, you might want to journal it. That way you can see your progress. This is something you should do when you start the cleanse and also when you start to wean yourself off the diet. That way, if you notice you can't handle food at the moment, write it down to remember this. Journaling also helps you figure out your feelings too. If you liked a certain aspect of the cleanse or certain foods, write those down so you can figure out how to add that to your diet once everything is over. If there is something you heavily disliked, you can write it down as a reminder. This is good to see the progress that you've made, including the changes you've built and also the difference it makes down the line as well for you too. Stay focused on the long-term goal. Finally, make sure that you're staying focused on the long-term goal. I know this is a challenge for some people since it often is hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But having a long-term goal in place before you get started is important. Make sure you write that goal down and then come back up and remember it when you feel like giving up. The long-term goal is ultimately important. Why is that? Because it helps you better understand exactly what it is that you need to do, the progress that you've gone through, and the gains that you've made. The long-term goal will keep you grounded, so if you're struggling to achieve it, then you'll want to look at different approaches. But the long-term goal is good for sustaining after the cleanse. Maybe the goal that you had was to learn to eat better. While it's tempting, the long-term goal of a healthy body with better eating habits is something to look back on. Sustaining your goals after the cleanse is a challenge, and when you get back to eating again, it can feel weird. But by learning to sustain, you'll be able to achieve your goals at a whole different level and truly net the benefits of a green smoothie cleanse as well.